following our introduction to Postman and ExistDB, let's try to rewrite some of these requests in the Web API Kit. So taking the first request, I have created a class that is located under WAC Core Examples API Intro Operations. First thing we have to do when we create the class is inherit it from HTTP operation which lives in this namespace. The HTTP operation as it gets processed is going to resolve our class into a usable HTTP request and response. So right now we have to tell it where we want to get the data from and how we want to get the data and what we want to do with the data when it comes back. So first thing we have to define is that this is a get operation which lives in this namespace and we have to define the path and we're going to use the constructor that takes two parameters and I will explain later why the first parameter is left as null. So the second parameter we're passing in the absolute URL to our resource and we want to tell it okay if how much time do you want this operation to take if it takes more than 10 seconds it should probably time out so here we're going to define 10 seconds and uh, there will be some changes coming to this HTTP timeout uh, currently if the operation is going to take more than 10 seconds regardless of the transfer progress it's going to time out and we will change that uh, the other attribute that we want to use is the type of provider for HTTP that is going to be used. We have right now we have three options. We have the Unity www, which is free, and it's fairly good for what we're trying to do here. The other two are UniWeb and Best HTTP, which are paid assets, and I believe they also require Unity Pro. So we'll tell it that we want to use HTTP provider and here it wants a type of the provider. So we're going to say type of HG API WebKit providers and we're going to select the www client. The best HTTP and UniWeb providers are separate downloads because they do depend on those assets. So if you don't have those assets, you will get errors, and we wanted to prevent that. So they're available for free. Okay. And even though not required, we also want to tell it that, hey, we're looking for JSON data here. So we're going to say HTTP accept application JSON. Let's resolve this one to this mappers. Uh, for now, let's just try to run it like this. Let's save. And then I've created an API intro test class. It's just, just a mono behavior. And what we're going to do is let's wait one second before the request executes. And the way we call it is the way we call the operation is operations. Then our operation class name get car models v1 and then we call a send method on it um, the send method takes callbacks uh, the callbacks being on success on failure and on complete right now let's leave those as null we don't want to do anything with the data save this and go into unity let it rebuild And here I've created a game object, WAC exist examples. It is enabled, the script is enabled, and this is our API intro tests. So if we run this, let's see what happens. Uh, there's a bunch of logging that's configurable from verbose all the way down to error. Let's start in the beginning. Uh, the operation is letting us know that it's initializing then it's letting us know the URL that it's going to go to. Then, 
as we've defined our timeout to 10 seconds, it's letting us know. Then what happens is internally, it takes all the attributes on the class and on the fields, which we'll get to, and resolves them into a usable HTTP request, which we can see down here. It's going to use the www client provider. And here in the headers, we can see that it mapped our accept header into an HTTP header. The operation then goes through several states. It goes from idle to started, started to busy, and here you can see some transfer progress. Then it can go from busy to completed, timed out, canceled by the user, or aired. In this case, it completed, and we can see the response is a 200 status code. It took 0.11 seconds to complete. It does not have any errors. It is not faulted. And we can see that there is 42 bytes have come across the wire and seven HTTP headers, which we have done nothing with yet. So here is the data as text. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything to us because we still have to parse it. It's a JSON string. So let's try to do that next. So back in our operation, we've created a public class called car models. And inside the car inside of it, there's a string array and the field name inside the JSON is model. So now we want to use this inside of our operation. So let's do public car models and let's call it response. And we're going to mark it up with HTTP response JSON body. So let's talk about the JSON deserializer and serializer. Uh, the models and the field names have to match the way that they're represented in the JSON file. And these attributes here is going to tell us that the text coming back across the wire is a JSON string and it's supposed to get mapped as the car models. These attributes come from the core attributes, mappers, and body. So some examples are treat the request as a binary, so we could change this to byte. Uh, we could treat it as text, so we could change this to string, and obviously change the attribute that we're using, but well, we want car models. The JSON deserializer attribute is in extended folder, mappers, and here is the JSON deserializer. There's another one that will take the bytes returned and turn it into a Unity sprite or a texture or XML, which we'll try not to use as much. Okay, great. So now we have this response. It's supposed to get mapped. Okay, so back in our API intro tests class, we want to do something with that data when it comes back. So we're going to use the unsuccess callback and we have to define an action. An action is just a void method in C sharp. Let me paste that in there. We called it on success and the action is of a type of the operation and HTTP response which is an internal class that gives us access back to the actual response and the request. Um, if you're not familiar with actions, please look them up. Here we're telling it that the two parameters that are going to be passed into this action is called operation and response. Okay, so inside of our action, we're going to output a comma delimited string of all the models that come back. So here the operation is our get car models v1 operation. And as you remember, we've added the response field, which is the car models type. And inside the car models, we have the model JSON field, which will be mapped to a string array. 
we can see this output here civic comma accord comma pilot okay so let's take a look at this again inside the debugger as the operation comes back uh, the HTTP operation class has a couple of methods that we can override one of them being to request as the data is going to the server and one the other one being from response as the data is coming back so if we override this protected method and set a breakpoint here we can save this we've already attached to the unity debugger let's let unity rebuild and let's run this again so here now we're in the debugger and if we look at the response it's going to be null if we allow this to run now the response has been mapped from our JSON string coming back in this lesson we've learned how to create a basic request and how to map that response from a JSON string to an object